Um, interesting story. I basically started out as a developer and I actually fell into digital marketing when I set up my first business, which was an e-commerce business back in 2011. So what happened was that I started my, I set up the website and after we set up the website, uh, we ran a Kickstarter campaign and in order to uh, facilitate the Kickstarter, we had to raise $50,000, which we did, which was fantastic. And then we delivered to our backers and after we delivered to our backers, we were like, oh, how do we acquire new customers? So that's when I actually had to set aside coding and focus on doing digital marketing. So started out by learning things like paid advertising. Um, sadly, couldn't do a lot of that because we had a very small budget. Um, and eventually I ended up setting up a blog and writing religiously on a product that I wasn't too interested in, interested about once a week, continuously for six to nine months. And after a period of six months, that blog actually grew to about 100,000 uniques a month. And that's where most of our sales came in from. So that's actually how I started doing digital marketing. And the way I started uh, Two Stallions, which is our agency, um, is very interesting as well because a friend of mine approached me and he's also my business partner today. And he said that, hey, I have a few clients who are looking for website development work as well as digital marketing. And um, I have certain skill sets, you have, a, you have the other set of skill sets, we complement each other, why don't we work together, right? So that's how we ended up starting the agency and I'm still here today. When it comes to digital marketing, a lot of, for us, the main thing is that we are not too niche down into a specific industry. So for, for our company, we work with uh, a lot of different industries across the board. And even though the strategy is similar, for each client, your implementation is going to be unique, right? So they have different budgets, they have different uh, criteria, different KPIs, and that's where the fun part comes in. So as long as you enjoy the joy of implementation, um, it does, it's always going to be unique for you. For me personally, I derive my inspiration from my team because uh, these days, I don't really get down into any degree aspects of running the campaigns myself. So I usually will just reach out to my team and say like, hey, how's this campaign going? What are you, what are you guys doing specifically for this client? Then I'll throw a few questions at them or I'll ask them like, hey, have you heard of this new tool? Or have you heard of this new thing that you can do? And then chances are they probably have, uh, which is kind of sad. But yes, um, that's how I end up learning more things from them because they're all really passionate uh, about what they do. So they're always learning and whenever I ask them questions, they're able to answer my questions and they're able to add additional insights to me. So yeah, my team is where I gain most of my inspiration from. Well, interestingly, as a marketer, the skill that you need the least of is probably the marketing skills themselves. When it comes to uh, working in an agency, one of the top skills you should have is communication skills and having transparent communication. Right? So the reason why that is important is because when you work with clients, having a transparent mode of communication with them uh, allows you to build longer lasting relationships which don't crumble at the first sign of projects not running well or things going south. And that's essentially how we have built up our agency where our clients keep working with us for the long term because we always have a very open relationship in terms of sharing all the good as well as the bad. Um, another skill that's really important for a marketer to have is patience. Because while you as a marketer might have a lot of skills, the people you work with may not be as up to date as you. So there's a lot of uh, back and forth with certain clients who may not be as knowledgeable and it's important for our team to also be able to educate them. So as a marketer, you need to be patient with them and ensure that you are educating them on whatever it is that they need to know in order to keep up with what you're doing and be on board with what you're doing. Uh, and the last skill when it comes to marketing is continuous learning. Because in, when I started in digital marketing, the only social platforms that were around were Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn had just started gaining some traction. And today, there are tools like Snapchat and TikTok. Sadly, I don't use either one of them, um, but I do know about them, right? So as a marketer, you have to continuously keep learning and keep upgrading yourself. So the easiest way to do that would be to just read blogs, follow some of the industry leaders in the space and make sure that you keep up with what they're looking at. Um, and of course, even if you're doing development work and not just marketing, you still need to understand what are the latest technology stacks on which you're going to be building, right? So those are three things that you should as a marketer know about. Uh, when it comes to running digital marketing campaigns, uh, the thing that is usually most challenging is, is non-digital, right? So one of the campaigns that I remember in our early days when we first started our agency was when we worked with a large FMCG brand and this was a project around social and SEO and um, the main challenge we faced was we were working with a regional team around some of their Southeast Asia uh, clients, around some of their Southeast Asia assets and for each of these projects we had to work with a local team through the regional team and it got very very uh, difficult because 
getting access to tools, getting access to data at the local level was very, very difficult. And once we got that, when our team used to create, uh, make the creatives for the project for social, we'll send it to the regional team, they'll say yes, it's great. Then we'll send it to local and they'll say it's not. So we had to do a lot of iterations. So there's a lot of teething uh, problems over there. So that was really, really challenging because it set us back by at least three or four weeks in terms of getting uh, the project done. But said, uh, the good thing for us was once we got through all of these problems, um, we actually had a very successful campaign. So once we had a process in place where everyone was on board and working together, um, the SEO results in a, it was a three month campaign, the SEO results were really good. So we were working on a subsection of their website and we managed to grow their traffic to that subsection by about 400%. And the traffic is also really engaged. Um, so we saw that the bounce rate had dropped by about 50%, um, and the pages per session was, had increased by about 27%. And for the social media as well, uh, the challenge again that we faced there was a lot of our initial ideas. We couldn't really implement them because this industry has a lot of restrictions. So we actually had to spend time learning about these restrictions throughout a lot of our original ideas and then come back with new ones. Eventually, after we ran the social media campaign over the quarter, we actually managed to drive a 100% increase from social media traffic back to the site. And the traffic, again, was a lot more engaged. Um, in terms of pages browsed, they were browsing over four pages per session, which was really fantastic. So the client's really happy, and for us, this became a really good case study for future clients as well. Well, one of the things that I would highly recommend anyone starting any business, not just an agency, is to go ahead and get a mentor because that would really simplify your journey a fair bit, right? Knowing or being able to speak to someone who can give you the advice of uh, what they had gone through before themselves will really shorten your path to a success. So I would definitely recommend that to anyone. Um, so to be fair for us, even in the early days, uh, we started out by implementing a project management system and that made our life very simple because everyone who was part of the team would be part of that management system and therefore they would get direct access to our clients so our clients could directly communicate with them through that and also for our team they'll be able to upload all of their workload data and tasks through into that system so it made facilitating projects and running them quite straightforward for us um, in terms of my management style is actually very hands-off because in, I believe very strongly that you hire people for a reason. And as a, someone who is in a high level position, you don't want to be micromanaging them. So you hire the right people for the role and then you get out of the way and let them do what you want them to do. Right? So generally my, my uh, approach is very hands off where I only check in from time to time in case they need some help or in case they need some advice in terms of moving forward. So one of the lessons that I learned is a lot of people tend to work in the business rather than working on the business. And in the early days when we were just two people working with a bunch of freelancers, uh, this was basically what I, what I was, uh, my, this was basically how I used to work, right? I'll be very much in the business. Um, but the moment we started growing our team and hiring people in house, um, I realized that I could not be in the business if I wanted the business to grow. This is a policy or a trap that a lot of owners fall into where they keep working within the business and they can't take a macro perspective of what's actually happening. So wherever possible from the get-go, you should always start setting up systems, setting up processes so that as soon as possible, you are able to extricate yourself from the business and instead of working within the business, you work on your business and grow it. One of the things you want to ensure is not to start a business on your own because when you start a business on your own, it's a very lonely road. So having a business partner definitely helps because it allows you to share the workload, share the pain, and as well as share the joys. Possible, don't try and start things up alone on your own. Uh, always try and find a business partner uh, to begin, begin your journey with. Yeah.